Biomechanics Principle Number 8, the concept of lever arm function and dysfunction. Lever arm function relates to the force couple of power of the calf muscle and the length of the, the effective length of the foot. A strong calf muscle combined with a long lever arm gives the best power generation throughout gait and in particular during push-off. What will decrease the coupling and cause dysfunction is if the lever arm is short, the calf muscle is weak, or both. The lever arm is measured in the direction of the axis of the foot. If the foot is turned outward, then the distance between the back of the heel and the effective length of the foot is foreshortened, as you can see in the sketch. There are two reasons that the foot can be externally rotated and affect lever arm function. One is external tibial torsion, and the other is a valgus everted subtalar joint. Previous talks in this series have uh, discussed the function and motions of the subtalar joint. Valgus eversion is external rotation and dorsiflexion of the subtalar joint, i.e. of the acetabulum pedis. It's that external rotation of the subtalar joint in a flat foot that will effectively shorten the lever arm, even though the foot remains at the same length, it's just that the foot isn't pointing straight ahead anymore. So here you can see in more colorful images, in a foot that's pointing straight ahead, the lever arm has a fixed length. If the foot is turned out because of external tibial torsion, eversion of the subtalar joint, or both, then the effective length of the foot is shorter than it would otherwise be. A shorter lever with the same strength of the tricep surrey muscle is going to decrease the power couple. The calcaneal lengthening osteotomy corrects eversion deformity of the hind foot at the site of deformity, restores the length of the lever arm, and is the most effective known way to correct symptomatic or dysfunctional eversion of the subtalar joint. In this sketch, you can see that with the flat foot, the lever arm has the length matching the purple arrow. Following the calcaneal lengthening osteotomy, the foot is now straight, the valgus eversion of the subtalar joint has been corrected, and the lever, has been, lever arm has been lengthened. Now, that's the best lever arm that the foot can have. If there's a tight gastrocnemius associated with the foot deformity, a gastrocnemius lengthening or recession can, can, can be combined with foot deformity correction because what we might lose in strength of the triceps surrey with the gastrocnemius recession will gain with the increased length of the lever arm. If the gastrocnemius is lengthened without correcting the foot deformity, then the function will be poor, push-off will be poor, and a crouched gait will ensue. Also be aware that in some cases, also be aware external rotation that for the short in lever arm is a combination of flat foot deformity as well as external tibial torsion. Calcaneal lengthening to correct flat foot deformity has one final position, and only one. When the calcaneus is cut, the graft is inserted, the forefoot and hindfoot are lined up, that's the final position. That's the best that that deformity can be corrected, so the largest graft is inserted and the foot deformity is corrected the best it can be. The tibia can be rotated 359 degrees for any residual rotational deformity. There's no fixed amount that you can actually even predetermine. So in cases of flat foot deformity, external rotation, and concern about lever arm, always correct the foot first. Once you have the largest graft in, you straighten out the medial column of the foot, then whatever external rotation deformity that exists is in the tibia. And then you can rotate the tibia however many degrees you want, 5, 10, 15, 20. But you can rotate it until there's no residual external tibial torsion. That's always, therefore, done second and not primarily.